this is the very first time that we do this and I have a camera here, a camera here and a camera there. And this is really exciting. I found life coaching and I was like, holy crap, like I want to be a life coach. But I was like, no, but I'm already an actor. Like, how am I going to just like change careers? Like, you can't do that. But I like, I just did it. I got certified as a life coach and I was like, I just want to help women. Aura Isabella has been an actress and content creator since 2004. She wrote and directed short films as a teenager and at the age of 19 studied screen acting in Vancouver Film School and then theater in Mexico City. She worked as an actress in theater and Mexican television and in 2016 she discovered her passion for self-development and started creating content on YouTube. She now lives in Washington, D.C., where in 2018, she started her online coaching business to help female online entrepreneurs become confident on camera, increase their visibility, and make more sales using video because she believes every woman can have the business of her dreams with the right strategy and confidence. Now, here's your host for the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy V. Terry. You have worked hard, you know, it's, it's been a journey it's, it's not just a point in time. You, it's not like, oh, I got the training, I am done, I'm finished, now I have my business. You continue to educate yourself, you got the coaching, and now you're building your business, and now you're um, getting your customers. Um, but, but it's a process, right? It's a journey. Um, now, for all the viewers out, out there, and now for the people that are going to end up you know, seeing this podcast, um, there have been other things that have happened in your life, such as you moved countries, you know, and how does that affect you for people out there? You know, how, how does that impact you emotionally, physically, you're changing countries? You know, what can you share with people? What, what, what lessons have you learned? Is that difficult? Is that easy? Yeah. Um, it is difficult uh, because you've lived in DC. Uh, it's very, it's a very um, corporate and international organization oriented town. Right. When my husband was like, do you want to move to DC? I was like, yes, as long as I have, have internet and my laptop, I can move to DC. And that was like one reassuring thing that I was going in the right direction because like, I was like, okay, I don't have to worry about not having a job because I have a computer and I, I will have internet so I can move. Um, and I also took it as a sign because I've, I've been wanting to create English content for a long time. And for years, I was thinking about it and I was like, it's not the right time. Like you don't have an audience. You like you, nobody that speaks English um, knows who you are. They don't like, you have no content out there in English. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I'm moving there. And I'm like, it's a sign. Like, so I started making relationships here in person and online. And I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to start making English content. And if I really want the relationships, I'm going to have to build, build them. So mm -hmm. I, I was super scared because it feels weird to build an audience and grow an audience in Spanish, even though it's not huge. Um, but to grow it to 30,000 subscribers on YouTube and then being like, okay, I'm going to start a new Instagram account. Exactly. Where, where nobody knows who you are. Oh my God. Like I, it makes me feel sometimes it's embarrassing sometimes. Like I, I'm like embarrassed to like start over, but then I'm like, hell no. no. I know that what I have to <laughs> offer is amazing. I know like my content is great. I know I can help women achieve get a phenomenal results. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start doing English content, and I'm right. gonna I'm gonna build relationships. Um, right. uh, and it's not easy. It is very time consuming, but it's, but I got time. Like mm. I get, like I'm, I make time to build relationships every single day. Uh, but moving countries, it is, um, it is hard. Anyone who has lived outside of their home country knows that it's not, um, it's not easy, but right. 
entrepreneurship is not easy. So right. I'm like, I'm used to not, not having like easy things. So because I'm going always after something hard. Yeah, so, yeah. so I'm like, I can handle this. I'm in a, a very privileged position. I'm like, I'm very blessed. So well, that is exactly why I led that question and why I got to the question of the move uh, once I find out that you had moved from Mexico to Washington. And, and regardless, it's just a move regardless of the country, right? Yeah. Um, because I hear so many entrepreneurs talk about, you know, in that one country where they're at, you know, they have so many excuses. Like, you know, I'm not ready or, um, you know, I, I don't have the answers or I don't know what business to open yet. I know I want to do something and I feel it within my heart, but you know, people are questioning me or I'm going to be judged or I am afraid to be in front of a camera. And reality is putting people like you, you know, in front of them and say, look, I mean, here's somebody and listen to her story. She had already a total audience already built uh, um, where she had following. And she said, it doesn't matter. You know, I have my following in Spanish and I yet can still build a brand new following in a totally different language from a different country. And I can do it. You know, I'll take the challenge all over again and I'm not afraid of it. Um, and I'm proud of you because, you know, the challenge is there for you and you took the bull by the horns. You were not afraid of it and you have all the energy to do it. Um, so you're a great example for many entrepreneurs out there to, to go for it and not to be afraid. Um, now, I am sure there were fears, right? So what were some of those fears that you faced? Can you share some of those with us? Yes. Um one of my biggest fears is that since English is not my first language, even though I speak it really well, I'm aware of that. I'm not saying I have bad English. Pretty good I think to me. my English is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but I, it's still my second language. So sometimes I make mistakes or I, I hear myself and I'm like, oh, what, why are you sounding like that? Or that's not what I wanted to say. So I do have a big fear of being judged of, of, of probably not sounding as smart as I want to. So if I'm like, if, the, if somebody doesn't like the way I speak, then they're not going to follow me. They're not going to consume my content. They're not going to take my course. But I mean, it's, there's nothing I can do. Like, I'm not going to change the right. way I speak or, you know. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I have a very large fear and it's probably why I teach other women how to get over this because I I've always had a fear of, of success and I think this happens to a lot of women a lot of entrepreneurs uh, what when I ask myself like what is it gonna be when you achieve this thing like yeah. and I'm like holy crap like what is it gonna be like when I like when I sell out my course in English that's gonna like holy crap, how am I going to uh, deliver for them in another language? And I get scared, but then I'm like, we're going to go have okay, margaritas. I know That's that fear. We're going to go exactly. send them. Exactly. <laughs> and, the, and the thing is that I already know, I know my fear so well, and yeah. I invite them and embrace them so much that I, I'm never going to go away. Like, I know they're going to be with me my whole life, yeah. but I've, um, I, I've come to love them because they like they're like this little red flag that comes up and tells me like okay you're feeling afraid so you need to rise above this and like you need to keep going because if you stop now then you're really gonna like feel bad right now you're just feeling the fear because you're human but you can keep going and you are capable of doing whatever and I think I teach this because it's one of my biggest um, fears in this journey that I'm, I'm taking. But th that is um, great advice that you're giving to all the entrepreneurs out there, you know, to really, because actually what you're saying, believe it or not, and do you know uh, Tim Ferriss? No. Within, with his own words, he basically said what he recommends to do when you actually have a fear. 
which is to basically identify the fear, um, basically just pinpoint very clearly so that way you can find a solution for that fear. So in your case, you have very well identified, you know your fear so well, and it's the only way that you can tackle that. Um, so congratulations to you for doing that. And, and that is a great message to all, all entrepreneurs out there that the only way that you can tackle that fear is actually facing it, you know? And I call yeah. it kicking it on the butt. You know, yeah. kick that fear on the butt. Yeah, it's the only way, <laughs> the only way we have. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, very good. So you are an empath, right? And you wrote that on one of your last um, Instagram yes. posts. And I find that extremely interesting because that means you're a very, very sensitive person. It is very, uh, it's very draining. Uh, <laughs> it, it took me 30 years. I'm 29 right now, but it took me a long time. I wasn't good at this when I was in my early 20s. I need to set very clear boundaries in my life, in my environment, in the people I surround myself with, and the content I consume. Because since I'm a sponge and I'm always um, filling myself up with other people's energy, Mm -hmm. If I don't set the right bound, right boundaries, I'm going to be filled up with just like negative, nasty, uh, sad energy. So the way I do this is just I kind of uh, absorb the right energy. I surround myself with people who have the energy that I want. I'm not going to just hang out with people that I admire. Like I, I. I'm not like picky about, no, but I am a little bit picky about friends. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, like, I, I, I surround myself, what I'm trying to say, with the people that are going to give me the energy that's going to that's gonna set me on fire, that's going to get sort of energy so I can recycle that inside of me, if that makes any sense. It and makes then, sense. Of course it makes sense. Yeah. And then putting it into my content and into my videos and into my clients. Um, because when I don't set boundaries, like when I started doing my consulting business, I used to take on any clients. Uh, I used to take on anyone who was willing to pay me because I needed the money and because I work and I wanted to make a name for myself. And I wasn't protecting my energy. I wasn't protecting the, just my energy field. And I was so miserable. Mm. Uh, I, it, it was so bad because then my energy was just, so low and so um, like on the dark right. side that I, that I had nothing to give the clients that I was happy to work with. If you're an, a person who feels everything and who takes on a lot of energy, you need to say no. Like you need to say mm -hmm. no to people you don't want to work with. Setting boundaries is how I, I recycle my, my energy. And I do like how you said how important your energy is to you in how much you value that. I think a lot of us throughout our entrepreneurial journey, sometimes we forget about it and put it on the side. <laughs> it's not a priority yeah. and it's so important. Um, you actually have to put your energy in a pedestal. What are some of the lessons learned that you can share with the audience? This is number one from over 10 years of being on camera of being an actress, of auditioning all the time, of making videos on YouTube for three years, it's okay to look stupid. And this one, like, um, because a lot of us do not do what we want to do. We don't put ourselves out there because we're afraid to look stupid or to not, um, to not measure up of, to the image that we have in our heads of the thing we should be. This is something that is really important to talk about as an entrepreneur, which is at a personal level and is very intimate, but it is really important because we all deal with it, right? And yes. as entrepreneurs, you know, before I became an entrepreneur, I was already a workaholic. As an entrepreneur, I think that doubled. And, you know, I... Oh, I'm always curious to hear how other entrepreneurs deal with this. How does, you know, your partner deal with that? 
I think uh, talking about it is key. I am fortunate enough to have somebody who is very, very understanding. And at one point, if you are dating an entrepreneur, married to one, uh, or you are one yourself, you need to understand that there's no such thing as a life and work balance. It's more of a life and work mesh, and it's all part of one thing, especially when you have a personal brand, because you are talking about your story. So we, he knows, Alan, my husband, he is an amazing, amazing human being. He's an amazing person. But he knows that what I'm building is part of my, my life and my journey. So it's just we have really good communication and we make sure that our time together is without phones. So if we are hanging out, if we are hanging out outside, every single time we go out, I will ask them, I will ask him to get, take pictures of me because I need my Instagram content. So, but what I do is we, we do like a quick um, 10 minutes of photos and then I would normally put my phone away. But at least, I mean, when you guys are together, you have kind of like your rules, your little rules where you said you put your phone yeah. down. I think it's funny and it's cute that you said we have our 10 minutes where he takes my pictures. I think by now it's like for <laughs> the entrepreneurs, like they know all of them. Like <gasps> the 10 minute picture, all of them know that. Like my husband yeah. is the same thing. He's like, honey, can you take that picture? Can you take that picture? I mean, they all know. Like, <laughs> so this is the moment uh, where I give you the opportunity to talk to this mic and to um, this screen as you were talking to a room full of entrepreneurs. If you had that chance, what would you say to them? For all of the entrepreneurs out there is that your message matters. Your message, your why matters. I know we live in a world with 7 billion people. I know that we're all insignificant in the universe. I know that, but your voice matters. So that's basically it. Like your voice matters. Your message is important enough and the world needs to hear it. Amen, sister. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. You are beautiful. You're going to be amazing. You already are amazing. And you're going to be extremely you. successful, more than you already are. Um, so where can people find you? Okay, so you can find me on, on my Instagram. It's I am Aura Isabella. Uh, yeah, so just go there. And if you have, if you speak Spanish, you can go to YouTube and look for me as Ita Mejorada. Um, and yeah, you can watch my Spanish videos and let me know what you think. But if you want to work with me or if you want to get all of my free content, you can go to my Instagram at I am R. Isabella. I am running a free challenge right now for confidence on live video. So if you want to sign up, go to the link in my bio and my Instagram and get amazing confidence on video. Like who doesn't want Yay. that? Yay. <laughs> There you go. It doesn't get any better than that. A coach in Spanish and English. Come on. Come on, people. Sign up for it. <laughs> Thank you so much, beautiful. I love your vibe. Thank you. Have a beautiful, gorgeous day. Thank you, people, for watching. Thank you, mom. Thank you so much. Thank you, your mom. Thank you, mom. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you for everything. You are an amazing person, and I'm so, so happy to be here. All right. Bye. Bye. Now, we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.